Welcome back again to another episode of Keeping It 100. As always, we want to thank you and as always your host Giselle. and Victor. And we're <laughs> over here to Keep It 100 with you guys. Yet again, another week and another special guest. This time hello, we have hello. CEO and owner of Destiny Details, Ms. Destiny Barrios. So Barrios. Berrios. Both of y'all wrong. It's Berrios. And Berrios, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Is she trying over here he like he try to correct burritos. me? When it, he said burritos. He burritos. Just, you know, making you it said um, yeah, okay. mainstream. <laughs> right, like now. Nah. That was Anyways. a really cute intro, though, guys. The, well, the like that? That, I start with. that was well, good. Thank you. Well, we're wow. you she just noticed that's our intro. That means that she's never seen it. Wow. No bullshit. But I have. I'm starting <laughs> with you know. Did you guys like the intro? That was a great intro. <laughs> <laughs> But okay. you mean you mean the video we had intro yes. or the intro I gave you? No, the the video that just started video. on the channel. Well, thank you. I did that myself. <laughs> I was that's what I was gonna say. Wow, you edited you got it. Cheers. Yourself. Yeah. So, um, thank you for being here with I'm us. Still celebrating over here. Oh, I like that. <laughs> oh, that was for Luigi's birthday. This was this was for Luigi's um party. We what's we? Luigi. The nickname of Luigi. Oh, gotcha. That's his nickname. <laughs> that's, that's clever. Like clever. Luigi. <laughs> what is the letter? That's clever. So, Destiny, um, you know, I, 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 you've been friends with yourself for like ever. Wow. Since 2000. <laughs> since 2000. Since 2000, yeah. 22 years. Wow, that's Since a long time. Dude, you aging us, though. You're aging us right now, so. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you guys have been friends we've for been, a long Yeah, time. we've been friends we for were a four. long time. We were four when we met. No, you weren't. Oh. <laughs> That's Anyways, that's I, just wanted, I just wanted to say that because, you know, not, not only, like, we want to invite you just because, you know, but just because you've known yourself for a long time you're a single mother you're an entrepreneur you have a full-time job like you have a lot going on with with yourself and you know we wanted to like, kind of like separate this time to kind of like you know have a chit chat talk with you do some a little go. different because i don't know if you're you're used to doing lives or you ever done lives? absolutely before? not like y'all know i hate doing this <laughs> so this is I your first live this is my first actual like formal live. Oh, the only other times that we go live is when we're live from somewhere. When we're drinking and smoking. <laughs> yeah, when we're drinking. Yeah. But this is a this is a good thing that I have too, like with the drinks that you know do a little cheers and it, it lightens up the mood a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, I don't really like um doing too much public speaking, which is weird because I want to. Like I want to like it. I want to get better at it. I want to do it more. You know, that's like a personal goal. But yeah. um, I suck when it comes to like being recorded. You, I just like freeze up, you know. Like, but they say that you, if that's something that you want to do, you have to like learn. Yeah, to you gotta force yourself. Like, just get uncomfortable as many times as you can. You and just then do, you, it. Like, you do it. Yeah, you just do it. You just gotta do it, and eventually you'll not even think about it. You just yeah. It. I should have. Oh, actually, no. I do remember his name. So um. We worked on something for my nine to five the other day with a speaker called Zhai Zhang. And he talks about that. He did like this challenge, right? Where for 30 days or for the original challenge was for 30 days to go out and do something that you'll get rejected on. And so mm -hmm. then he did it for a hundred days. And I was listening to his talk the other day and I was like, damn, this is such a, like a simple, like way to put it, you know, like put yourself out there to get rejected. Like, damn. So he did it for a hundred days. Yeah, he did it for him. He's he's all over YouTube. So this was the first that I had heard of him, but he's all over YouTube. Um, I looked him up following, you know, the talk, and it was like, wow, this is something such a simple idea, but that put him out there. And look, now he's like a super, you know, famous speaker. And it all wow. started with him putting himself out there to be uncomfortable. Let me turn this off. It's a numbers game. Yeah. I mean, the same as like with sales. You know, like eventually, when when you have enough data, you can say, okay, every Every 10th person I talk to is going to be a yes. So it's like, mm -hmm. let me go out there and get my nose out of the way 
because mm-hmm. I know there's going to be one yes coming through. And even if I, it's normally every 10th, but it's the 11th, 12th, 13th, and I have, haven't have still got my yes, then it's like there's two yeses coming real quick. Yeah. So it's yeah. like. Do you see how you're thinking about again. it already on a business level? Like some people, the emotion comes first. So the fear like overpowers that like even thought process that is just data, that is just analytics, that is just okay, people are going to say no. Like, people are going to say no. People are going to say yes. You know, you're going to get rejected. You're going to feel uncomfortable. That, like, fear of feeling uncomfortable, like, is something that, like, I personally have to work on, like, big time. But it could keep you paralyzed. You know what I mean? Like, just the fear yeah. of being rejected. Like, meanwhile, it doesn't it doesn't overlap into any other area of my life, right? Like, because I'm mad confident when it comes to other shit. <laughs> but when it comes to certain things, I'm like, no. I don't want to do that. Good, don't worry. No, no. So for everybody that's watching us, who is Destiny Berrios? Berrios. Berrios. Um, Berrios. How do I describe myself, right? Um, I'm a Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx. Raised hey, mostly in the cultura, <laughs> cultura. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a single mom. Um, I have a daughter, she's nine years old, and I have worked in the events industry for like 13 years now, both wow. in corporate and then when I started my company that was in 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and so I love you know, I've been in events for so long. I love events, this is what I do, this is a big important part of my life, but I've also realized through that industry that like that doesn't make you right. Like you can't just be your job. You can't just be what you've been told you have to do or what you've chosen to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm on this, like, I need to discover myself again journey. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's never too late. There's always, right. yeah, I which is honestly always what led me to, you know, starting Destiny's Details to begin with. That's what led me to that. Like I, I was at a place where I was like, you know, unhappy with my nine to five, which, eventually it gets to right like uh, if you don't absolutely love your nine to five you're going to one day hate it and if and if you get to that day where you hate it and you don't have a plan or you don't have the next step in mind you got to figure it out you got to invent yourself you got to think about what you're going to do next unless you plan to just stay there unhappy you know so that's what i I started my company in 2014 because i was very very unhappy what i was doing i had just become a mom charlotte was like almost one no mentira charlotte was almost two Oh, when I, so I stood a whole year after she was born and I was miserable there. And so I was like, I need to do something else. I had no plan though. I had yeah. Nothing. Cause you had to spend your whole day, like away from your kid and then like completely. I mean, and then in this industry it's you know, a lot like what you guys do, it's all hours. It, people are having events at all hours, just like we're doing this right here. There's someone doing this, you know, at yeah. the place that I work at the current place I work yeah events are happening at all hours of the day so being a new mom and dealing with that was like it was just a little bit too much um and when it became absolutely too much right before she turned two i was like you know what i have no clue what i'm gonna do but i'm gonna take a leap of faith and i'm gonna take the savings and i'm gonna invest in myself and we're gonna figure this out like some way i had no business experience i had no definitely no well, you know, we have our social media experience from just yeah. using social media, but not like to use, you know, to grow a brand or to mm-hmm. grow a business. You just have to figure it out along the way, you know? And right. so that's what I've been doing for a while now. <laughs> wow. wow. So what's what's Destiny's details and how did like how did the name come about? Um, I'm a little bit narcissistic. <laughs> 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 I'm a Leo, big Leo energy. I, I thought about it for a long time and I was like, it just needs to be me. Like I'm the one that is doing this. So it needs it's to be. Me. I just want to thank me and I want yeah, to thank me. That's, that's pretty much what it was. You know, I was like, this is really something about me. Like this is something for me at, at that time, at that, you know, that time. And that's why now um, we got this overlay here, this nice overlay, but in my actual like lower third, you know, I put what I registered my company under is actually not Destiny's Details, is the detail dealer because I do want to branch out. Like, I want to be the brand. Like, what Vic told me the other day, he's like, basically, you are your brand. Like, it's you. And I'm, and that's what I want to, like, hone into. Like, I'm a little bit over the party scene just because it's draining. Like, it's, it's a trendy, draining type of 
you know, uh, industry that if you don't completely love every aspect of it, you get very tired of it. So I'm, I'm looking to sort of branch out with what I do. But what I, you know, my main focus is decor for boutique events. So baby showers, first birthdays, corporate parties, social functions. Um, you know, those, those are the main events that we do. And mm -hmm. I basically coordinate all the decor and most of the pieces, most of the moving parts, right? The people come to me at the beginning of their event process. And then we work together to like create this vision of what they have for their event. Mm, okay. Cool. How was it? How was it like for you during the pandemic with your, with the events? I think that's where I realized, like, do you actually love this, or is that what you figured out how to do in order to survive not working a nine to five? And so once events like sort of went under and and there was a decline in events, we couldn't do anything, right? There were no venues. Mm -hmm. There were no. We we just couldn't gather. You guys had restrictions. So, really. You had to pivot. And a lot of event planners pivoted, right? Like a lot of event planners started those drive-by parties and party buses. And I started feeling very overwhelmed. Like I was like, what the hell am I gonna do? Like what what, <laughs> what do I wanna do? And that's when, you know, it sort of really hit me where is it like, do you wanna do this? Or did you just like, you've been so, um, you know, it's habitual. Like you've been so right. in this industry for so long that it feels like second nature to you. So you figured out that's what you can do on your own. But yeah. when you lose that passion or when that passion needs to be redirected, you know, like that's where I'm right now. And it was, it was because of the pandemic because there was just no, so now my nine to five, thankfully I, I went back to working a nine to five and the nine to five I have now has been remote. And so thankfully I had that. Um, but you know, that's not what I wanted to do either. So mm -hmm. I want I, that was a time where I could have either honed in on my business and helped it grow or realize what I realized, which is I don't really want to do this no more. <laughs> like, I'm mm -hmm. a little over this, you know? Yeah. But uh, <laughs> this was during the pandemic. But did you see like, obviously, I'm sure you saw a decline. But when did you say kind of pick up again? Um, so to believe it or not, like during the pandemic, people, we were like not supposed to be gathering and there weren't as much gatherings, but you right know, the workers don't care. Time, yeah, no, I was about to say, like, I'm right sure there's people that time, didn't People there. started throwing events again. And even now, like I'm very under the radar, you know, that I've been doing a terrible job on my social media. I don't really post on my business page, just staying under the radar. And people are still like, hey, um, can you do my party on this day, that day? I still have bookings. I'm still working. And that's without <clears throat> promoting myself, you know, like that's without doing anything. And it's because that like repertoire was already created. Like I already set that standard. People know that I this is what I do and this is what I can offer. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that decline was instant. Like that, like the minute that everything closed down, right? I had four paid clients. I had four paid wow. clients that I had to think about, okay, how, how are we going to make this work? Because we have no idea when we're going to be able to have events again. Right. And I just actually did one um, two months ago for my last paid client. So, you know, was that two years later? Like, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. That one is gone. It was, it was paid two years ago. But how does that work? Do you, honor the, do you honor the price for from two years ago? So that's not, I don't think that's something that anyone could do, right? Like, right, you can't go right. nowhere. You can't go nowhere and find the price that um you were finding two years ago anywhere. So that yeah. was basically one of the, you know, terms of the credit, which it was, you know, whatever the going rate is now. Because I also work with multiple vendors. So it's not only about my price increasing, which it is yearly. My price is always going to be more yearly. But everybody else, right? Like the bakers, the balloon girls, like everything is a, is a uh, raised in price. So, you know, the price is overall higher. And so there was a difference that, you know, had to be covered. But in the end, people rather not lose the big amount of money that they already paid. That's right. true. That makes sense. So if somebody wanted to, uh, like, throw some type of event that will go to you, then you guys, they would tell you, okay, this is what I want. This is what I envision, blah, blah, blah. And then you guys agree to a price, a date, and then kind of get you to work basically after that at that point. Yeah. And okay. then you guys is literally me. So it's me. I'm, it's a I'm, one man team. I'm the, one the it's a one, yeah. I'm like, I, <laughs> one I am the one show. posting on social media. I'm the one executing the event. I'm the one coordinating the event. I'm the one researching for what I need. I'm the one purchasing what I need. So I wear all the hats, you know? That was another thing too. What made where you know where I realized like is this like you working so hard 
mm-hmm. on something that do you care about it as much as you you thought you did, you know? And so, so now I'm you? like, I realize what I do care about, right? It's the, it is the coordinating, the organizing, the putting things together. It doesn't have to be a limit where it comes to just like boutique events. Like I don't see myself right. just staying within boutique events. I want to definitely branch out. I want to do, you know, I want to literally start diving into your world, right? And do interior design. I want to eventually end up with Airbnb clients where I'm designing a bunch of your Airbnbs. You know, like you got to start thinking outside of the box. How can you use your skills and what you've learned in the field that you're in? And how can you like put it in other places? Right. Oh, and yeah. this is like Florida is like the perfect location for There's that. There's always for parties Airbnb. Or anything, no, right. and Airbnb. Oh yeah, that too for everything. Nobody's ever gonna stop going to Disney. Right. Like yeah. nobody's ever gonna stop going to Disney. Right. So. I saw there was this girl that was doing um a Lion King yeah. room. Yeah, no, that like like Lion King, the Mickey Mouse. With Lion having Mouse. Disney here, it's like you can have a different theme in every room, and it's yeah. like it's and gonna think be about a- it, everybody right now. What they want to do, you want to go to your Airbnb and you want to post it on the ground. So, yeah. <laughs> like, it's very important right now for you to have a plan when it comes to your design of of whatever you know. You're you're either a whole house, one unit. Um, if, if it's a little apartment, anything like you can have a little studio, right? If you have a studio in New York that you want to rent as an Airbnb, it should be selfie worthy. It should be so pretty oh, yeah. that everybody wants to take pictures in it because that's literally how you're going to increase those sales, right? Yeah. Like that's how you're going to get those people in. So those, that's like the, those are the worlds that I want to start getting involved in because I'm just like okay. a little bit bored with the party scene. So it's like, mm-hmm. what's next? How can I put everything I've learned within the corporate world, within, you know, beginning my own business and move it to the next thing? Okay. When did you like discover that you had like a, like a green thumb for like, the core for like that's what they say they call it green thumb no green thumb is when you green thumb is when you can plant stuff like when you can when you're good at planting. but i'm like you know she's she's making she's making stuff out of the blue here so like you know it's her green thumb it's like what she's good at so like when did you discover that um I want to say like all my life, honestly, like I think I think about when me and Giselle, I think about it often too, because I think about when me and Giselle were in high school, right? Mm-hmm. We had like this program that we had to do or a project that we had to do, which was like entrepreneurship, right? Like it was the the introduction to entrepreneurship. They didn't, mm-hmm. they didn't teach it to us that way. They didn't call it that. They didn't tell you that that's what that was. It was just a project. But that early on, 2000, right, 22 years ago, we had to figure out what was the business that we wanted to have. And the funny thing is that me and the partner that I had at that time were in the same field. She actually owns, I think, about two venues now um, in event planning. You know, she has two venues, she's an event stylist, and we actually partnered together to do party favors. And so you start thinking about like, wow, I didn't realize that was something I was into back then. I was... 14 years old. Like I wasn't paying attention to, you know, or I don't remember it now. Yeah. But, um, and then when I really like focused on that, like, yeah, that was like really early on that I really liked this stuff. And then you start paying attention to the pattern. And I'm like, yeah, honestly have always really liked this. Like, this is something I've always been interested in and that I've always dabbled in. And then fresh out of college, I just ended up with a job that I did and that opened the doors for me. Right. So Mm -hmm. when I ended up in corporate events, um, doing audio visual for corporate events, I realized like, this is not what I want to do. Like, I don't want to do the tech side. I don't want to do the audio visual side. I like the fun side of events. And so I just put my two worlds together, you know? That's cool. So how challenging was it like starting your business? In the beginning, I would say it was probably easier than it is now. Right. So in the beginning, I like to think about like the like the beginning of Instagram, even when I was, you know, first starting to put my name out there on Instagram, it was not as difficult as it is now, right? We did not have to do reels. I did not have to act. I did not have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have to become an actress. I mean, I mean it's like a, you must, right? It goes back to the beginning of what I said in this conversation, which is what holds you back a little bit because it's like, wait, I don't even like all this like public stuff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't like all this, you know, acting and I have to get into that because it was nothing like that in the beginning. It was a lot easier when it came to like marketing yourself on social media 
Um, but the hard part was making money, right? <laughs> like the hard part was literally profiting from these events. Like it, I had a conversation with an old friend the other day um, and we were talking about that. We were like, when's the first time that you actually made money, you know, working for yourself? Like it took a while. Like it took a very long time <laughs> to actually make money because in the beginning you just, you're investing in yourself. Yeah. You're just betting on yourself. You're just putting the money you have into yourself in every way. And these events, even, you know, in the beginning, I didn't know what to charge people. I like I say it all the time. The first time that I ever made money off an event, I charged like two hundred dollars, three hundred. Wow. <laughs> Maybe I charged three hundred because I made like one or two, something like that. But it was bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And you think about that now and it's like, wow, like I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> like, I really had to just learn. Let like I had learn. to figure it out yeah. you're figuring it out as you go i mean as a true new yorker right there yeah i mean and that's another thing too that's what you know just made it easier back then like if you from new york you have like innate hustle in you like you just that's you true. you are a hustler like you there's a certain lifestyle you want to have there's a certain lifestyle that you want to be a, a part of right because we come from the other side of that lifestyle like the areas that we come from are not the pretty beautiful areas right so you want that you want to you know uh have this goal to get a certain lifestyle you got to have a certain amount of money to do that right mm -hmm. and without you know the skills or without the business experience or without all of that what do you have you got hustle right you got to right. figure it out and that hustle is actually what has kept me going this whole time. You know, I, I figured it out along the way, but what's keeping me going is I'm either hustling or I'm not. Like now business is at a decline. Why? Because the hustle ain't there. It's, it's simple math, right? <laughs> like, yeah. You're not. It's like a factory. You have to like hustle. Right. Business, hustle, business, hustle, business, hustle, business. <laughs> so obviously other than hustling and other than I guess my question is like more like how do you handle or manage to to be a single mom to live in New York with all the <laughs> like crazy people, all the traffic, all the like, like one of the hardships in your life living in New York. <laughs> like all the uh, all the, the the rude people like walking around um the, having a full time the, all, job all the strict rules that you guys had having the strict pandemic. rules during what the pandemic. Rules? What strict rules do we have? During the pandemic. Oh yeah, yeah, that was we was not outside. We was we were not outside <laughs> during the pandemic. Yeah, and, was locked down. And having your own business at the same time. Like, how do you manage to do all that and stay sane? I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> but besides right that, <laughs> besides that, besides some good I, mean, I, I, I think good that's drink. not at all. That's not everything. Right? Say that. Besides a good drink. Um just to that. Mimosa, yeah, you, mimosa you know, yeah, for the culture. But be, you know, besides that, you you it, it, that can't just be the only thing that carries you, right? Um, it takes a whole lot of time management. That is another thing that I'm figuring out along the way. That that's something that you really just got to figure out. Um, this is the hand that I was dealt, right? I can't change the hand that I was dealt. I am a single mom. I have to deal with what comes with that. Um, I have a nine to five, which lately has been like seven to nine. Um, but you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's been hard, but you, you make the time for what matters and in your personal like development. Right. So yeah. like I said, once I realized that I wasn't like, I didn't have a full passion towards what I was doing. I put it on the back burner. I focused on other areas of my life. I focused on traveling. I focused on my nine to five that I was leaning on because it was just there. Like I knew that, you know, at least I had this. I, I don't want to hustle right now. I want to focus on keeping me happy so that I could figure out what's next. Right. Because mm -hmm. this ain't it. And sometimes that's just what it takes. Like you, you got to move a couple steps back to move a couple steps forward. Because you know, we, we're figuring it out on, on the way. I have no exact uh like method to my madness when it comes to managing all of this at once. Is some days are good you and figure it out as you go. <laughs> One of those yeah. things. I mean, I can I can understand like some days are harder than others, some some are easier, but 
you just gotta keep going forward. Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Like you said, this is the the hand you were dealt with. Is that you can either complain and not do nothing, or just keep doing what you're doing. And you gotta yeah. make lemonade with the lemons. And then also not even just keep doing what you're doing. Realize, right? Where is it that you can't keep doing what you're doing? Where something that you're doing ain't right? Like what? What is it right in what you're doing? What's like? What do you have to change? Because there's always something that you gotta change in order to move to the next level, right? So I think that's where like. That's where I'm at right now. Like, okay, you fucking suck at time management. You could curse on here. This ain't the radio. Um, but Sorry, yeah, a little too late to ask permission now. <laughs> yeah, a little too late. I just realized, but you know, you gotta, you, you, you just, you make it work. You make these things work. You make time for them. You, you, and you celebrate the good days. Like that's one big thing of how I deal with it all. I deal with it all by taking the time to celebrate the good days. Like, take a moment for you, go out. Y'all know I go out, have a great time, laugh as much as you can. Because if not, yeah. the, the stress of it all. Have some, it have some margaritas. Absolutely. I'm have waiting some for margaritas. Margaritas. some honey coladas. <laughs> get, get kicked out of a bar or something. <laughs> so in your journey as a as an entrepreneur who's also working a nine to five, like what has been your biggest like struggle that you can, that you can say? I would say not, um, not feeling comfortable once you, you know, because when you have a nine to five, there's one, there's one thing that keeps you comfortable and that's the security of not actually having to work harder. Right. So mm -hmm. finding that place in the middle of knowing that, um, excuse me, that your nine to five have the hiccups. That your nine to five <laughs> is Bring what, something. Can, what can fund your business, right? You gotta see that. Like you gotta see it for what it is, right? I, I don't like my nine to five. There's not something I like. Not currently. I like I actually love what I do. But if that's your mentality, right? Like this is not something that I want to continue doing. This is not something that I love doing. Um at minimum is funding what you have planned or what you can plan for. So mm -hmm. I struggle with that medium place, like knowing that you have to be on your toes, you know, with your nine to five and have an actual plan for that, or you're just going to get comfortable. And you yeah. I feel like we work work. the same way. Like, like if we have, if we meet our goals for the month, it's like, okay, no, I could it's not like, let's do it. Let's work even harder mm -hmm. to try to double that or triple that, you know, but, and it's also, like, but it's also okay. Right. It's also okay to, um, Take that break to say, to celebrate, to say, I met my goal yeah. because you can't just go hard forever and burn out. You I know? know that's the, the thing. The thing that's, is, that's the hard part. Cause it's like, when is it like, okay. The thing is, is like, she's too hard on herself. She's too hard on herself. And because <laughs> she's too hard on herself, then she can't savor or enjoy the moment that we just met our goal. Or we just did what we had to do for the month. I save her sometimes, but not long enough. <laughs> it's like it's like oh my god! Like it, I, I guess it's a piece of candy. I put it in my mouth. Oh, it's done. Let me get another one. Like I need more. <laughs> like and it's a, a never ending. I guess bar. It's a never ending bar. No, I it mean not, it's never not ending. Well, we need to keep going. <laughs> like we know we're near the. The place where you know we think it's okay to chill, right? That's what I'm. That's what that's like, my mentality. So much more, you know. But it's but at, at the same time, it's wrong because it's, yeah. at the same time you also have to celebrate a lot of things. Right. Like Everything. life is too short. I feel like life is too short to just like out don't like not to live just because you want to work. Like you know what I'm saying. Like just because you want to hit goals. Just because you want to. Like accomplish something, it's like you're you're not gonna. Because he's life. more, he's more like laid back, and I'm more like, oh my god, we gotta go, go, go. Because if not, we're gonna get old, and we're gonna not have energy <laughs> and this and that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's you're I laughing, mean, but I that's, get the that's extremity. Extremity. I'm serious. I do though. I get the extremity because honestly, like I think about that all the time. I'm like, oh my god, I wasted so much time, but then I pause and I'm like. You still got mad time. Like, like you let you you read things and you look at people who are where they are and, and you think about where when they got there, right? And that's like what inspires me and it keeps me going too. 
And I'm like, why I think I have to have it all? Like, I have to have this freaking, you know, multi-million dollar business by right now. I don't. I don't. Right. So now let's focus on how we can have that, right? And I think that with that, again, that New York spirit that she has, that's why yeah, yeah, opposite right now. But yeah, yeah, balance each other. Y'all need that yeah, balance. We do balance. Because yeah. you need the push too to to remind you, like, this is not where we want to stop. We don't want right. to stop just being good, just being okay. Right. Like, what's the point, right? When there's more to to have, there's more right. out there to have. Yeah. No, you got you got that right. But uh, you know. It is what it is. I can't, I can't complain. We, like you said, we balance each other out. So it, to me, it's a constant reminder that I'm not there yet, that I need to continue. And for her, I'm the one that reminds her, like, go, you like, need to calm fucking down chill. And like, ha- and live a little. Like, chill, chill out. Like, take a breather. Like, we're not going nowhere. We're still here. All right. We could keep going. Um, but I kind of want to ask you, like, have you ever done like a party or a special event for like, uh, I guess like a celebrity or famous person, like. Have I met? Have I ever, have you ever done like a party or an event? No. Uh, well, yes, yes. Um, but local, but I say no so quickly because I, that's, those are the goals, right? Like the ultimate goals are like doing an actual celebrities party. And I guess Do I should party, be party from the Bronx and it's a local celebrity and rest his soul. Um, but I did do Fred the Godson's baby shower and that's a, you know, Bronx rapper. Um, but other than that, it's been the, who has held me is my paying customers, like my paying customers that come back, right. The repeat clients are the best. Yeah. Because when you, when you get into, you know, it's going to elevate your business to, to have that celebrity clientele when you first get it. But in the beginning, it's probably not going to be profitable, you know. And so since I was never in a place where I wasn't thinking about profit, um, I was always thinking about how much is this going to make me, right? I didn't have the luxury of, like, I can fully just invest in myself. I had to balance it. I was This, this was all I was doing to literally sustain me and my child. Mm. So I had to find that balance. And my balance was more on getting like those corporate clients. And I guess because it comes from my cor- corporate background, but like getting the schools, like, you know, I work with a high school, with an elementary school, and those are long contracts. I'm going to have multiple events for the rest of the year. So I know I'm straight. So that was more my focus. That that it, that remains my focus than getting like that celebrity client. Although all the time I always say like I just need one good celebrity so client if, that'll open so many doors. So if tomorrow Cardi B was to Cardi B's assistant because she's not gonna call nobody was to call you like Cardi B wants come party do, with Cardi wants you to do her party like what would you tell her? Um, I would ask her why she stopped working with Pep because right now. <laughs> Wait, the who? person that she works with yeah. is an incredible Brooklyn event planner. Um, and you do. That First of all, at that, that's the one thing that you learn in this industry too. Like respect the people that are like doing a little bit more because they did that. They did the little more that it took to get there. Yeah. And so she works with an amazing event planner that I, we probably started around the same time, but I completely look up to completely like aspire to be like, because she has a clean cut design that she has been able to grow her brand with with like a huge celebrity clientele right and so yeah those are the goals like eventually that's, that's the goal let's make believe that pep went to europe to live she got covid <laughs> she, she got covid no europe. why she got covid no she got she covid went and to, went, to went to europe to spread it over there <laughs> I'm gonna go from over there. nah i'm pretty okay she bougie over there I'm pretty sure Cardi B will ask you for a, a lot of like crazy stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Have y'all never looked at her events? Her events are beautiful. They're gorgeous. Yeah, they're they nice. Yeah, over the top. But right now, whether you Cardi B or whether you someone local, like that's what people want. Like again, it's New York, and in New York, like people want detail. Yeah. And whether you Cardi B or whether you somebody from my same building, they want the same type of detail. And and people that aren't in the celebrity world are paying top dollar for this kind of detail. And New Yorkers are that. New Yorkers are picky as fuck. They they know what they want and they want it a certain way. So I'm sure you got to deal a lot with that, right? 
Yeah, that's definitely um, not the fun side of this because <laughs> New Yorkers dealing with New Yorkers is it could it could get you know fun it could get uh, interesting, um, but it's not the fun side of this at all. Um, I like when I have creative like uh, you know creative when they freedom. give you um, creative freedom, it's easier. Um, but you don't get that a lot, right? You're gonna get the client that want that knows what they want, that wants exactly this. It's it gets difficult to like really, you know, explain that that's cool. You want what you want, but maybe I'm not the right planner for you because I also mm -hmm. have a certain style, and I also want to uphold my brand, and I also want to do it the way that I want to represent my brand, right? So I'm that's not just gonna right. do what you want just because you want it, and just because there's a price tag on it. Right. Like if it's not gonna help me elevate my brand in any way, I would like gladly decline. And there, and that's also been what has kept me in a certain like stagnance, just mm -hmm. because you you don't want to give in to the the client that's just a paying client. You yeah. want to your brand, and you want to be able to hold your standards, right? And some of my standards are my price point, the way I want certain things to look, the type of materials I use, the vendors that I work with. Like, and that all matters, right? And so yeah. if you have like this amount of a budget, then I might just not be able to work with you, you know? And that's right. cool. Yeah. Like, and I know there's a lot of people that work with everybody just because they, they want to work with yeah. everybody. And it's just like- they want to get a deal or you, something. Like. If, if somebody's not the right fit for you, it's better for you to refer that person where are they going to, you know, make chemistry with somebody else. And because if you, if when you attract the client that's, that just causes you like headaches and stress. You're gonna keep attracting that. Yeah, absolutely. Because that client, right? That client that was difficult for you is gonna recommend you the same way the easy client did. The same way that you have a client that you loved working with, and that client now recommended you to their people. The annoying client is probably more likely to recommend you to somebody because you know you know I'm particular as hell. Like, so I think that's also why I got in this field because I never want anyone to do this part of my life. Like, let me deal with all the details in my life because I'm very particular. So yeah. I know that if I was to deal with someone, I would be as particular as some of these people, you know, that that come to me, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the first thing I think of. I take this, it's going to open the doors for so many more annoying situations. <laughs> like, yeah. so many more situations where you treating me like, like I'm, or you know, you're my boss and you're my nine to five. No, this is my business, right? Like I get to make those decisions. I get to decide who I want to work with. Like the freedom that I don't have in my nine to five, I have with this. Yeah. And I don't want to be overstressed in something that I enjoy doing. That's definitely yeah. step one. Do not deal with those type of clients, you know? And it's, I mean, I'm professional to everybody. I had somebody, you know, that I was seeing not too long ago that asked me like, oh, are you rude to clients? And I was like, whoa, like I'm <laughs> offended by that. You know, That's like- That's a weird ass question. Pump the brakes, boy, because <laughs> like I treat everybody very professionally first, even if you're not a client. Like I feel like every, we adults right now, right? I always say we pushing 40. I'm about to be 36 years <laughs> old. There's a certain way we should all be talking to each other. Like, you know, and so you could tell you know, you could tell in the approach and all of that, the type of person that you are going to deal with. And I get to decide that. I get to decide, yeah. I'm not going to deal with this. No, that's the great part about being your I'm own boss. Mm -hmm. And it, it happens everywhere. It happens in real estate, too. Like, there's some clients that you just don't butt heads. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay. Like, yeah. it's okay. You, you can't everybody, win everybody. Not everybody's for everybody. I'm not a hundred dollar bill. I can't just, you know, make everybody, make happy. everybody happy and content with when, when I'm around, like, no, yeah. like I'm just going to be myself. And if you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. There's a lot of other realtors that can help yeah, you that's out. That's why these industries oh, are over, right? Like they say, oh, the industry is not oversaturated because there's, there's not a you, right? Like you could do any, yes, anyone could do anything, right? But every industry has a ton of different type of people, a ton of different type of people. And you, you know, like you need to work with who's for you, right? For your own yeah. peace of mind, for, for the goals that you have for your brand too. Like I said, like you, you know, what's going to help you. I was not. Yeah, for That's sure. That's a simple decision to make. Like, is this going to help me? Is this, is this going to help me? Like, how much do I benefit from this? Right. You know, what's situation? in it for me? 
for sure. I mean, what's in it? But for we you? didn't we didn't get to ask this in the beginning of our our live. Um, for for everybody who's watching, all the millions Desti of viewers, all the millions of viewers, <laughs> is Destiny in a in a relationship? Is she single? In a situation, is, is this turning into a dating show? We the people, the people, the people, want, the people want to know. The people want to know. <laughs> um, I am currently wow. single. Oh. I have been very single for a very long time. Okay. Um, so I've been single. I want to say for like eight clean years. I was recently in a very short situation, so that that just don't count. Oh yeah, you, you gotta. That's. It we gotta we gotta move on from that because it just the you know the math ain't mathing. Like if I was no. single for close to nine years and in a very short situation that was a couple of months, no. it that's come. like that meme where the they're like this doesn't add up. The you, know, you gotta subtract, right? Don't add up. Well, yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> again, but I have been for a long time. For all them dudes watching. Now, now you know you write that down. Like <laughs> you know, if you like your mamas from New York and with with a little bit of attitude, there you go. Proceed with caution, though. Proceed with caution. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed so, with caution. so for those single moms, because there's a lot of single moms out there who they they work, you know, but they have dreams to start their own, you know, little. Well, not little. They're, they're small business. Nope. <laughs> they want to make it into their big business. What advice would you give them? Like, they, they don't have, they, they think they don't have time. They think that they're not good enough. I think what about that. Would you give and booty. And booty. And booty. Because everybody has time. You have time for what you want. <laughs> You have time. You do. Everybody has, like, even me, right? Like, I have that's the first time. excuse. I don't have time. And, and it's and it's a lie, right? So I can either say, stop lying to yourself, right? Or stop lying to yourself. You have time. You know you have time. Because there's no, um, there's no person, right? There's no person here who don't got the same 24 hours as the other person. Right. So right. if somebody else did it with the same 24 hours, what, why can't you? And then there'll be a lot of excuses, right? All the things that hold you back, but those really are just that is excuses. Yeah. Um, once you realize that, like that doesn't have to hold you back, you just need to learn how to balance that. You in the right direction. Everybody's journey also takes a different amount of time. Yeah, like, oh, that's wow. what I. That's what I feel. I feel like people people want to see results like this, and Ooh. then they don't. So they're like, "Oh, this is not for me." We yeah, love no, and, and also they look at everybody else's results, right? So it's like you looking at everybody else's results, but like you have no idea the amount of work that person put in. So right. yeah. why are you getting discouraged by someone else doing more than you? Like right. you need to sort of like look yourself in the mirror and be like your hard critic and 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 tell yourself like, are you doing enough? The answer is probably no. no. And the answer is probably no because you're not where you want to be. And right. if you yeah. were where you want to be, you would be going harder. Like, That's and you would know true. that you're doing enough, right? Like, you would know, like, I am doing enough, but right now I'm in this season. Because it, it's all about the journey, too. Like, there's different seasons. So you're not always going to be operating at 100%, right? Like, everyone deals with different things, especially when you're a single mom having your kid, having a nine to five and trying to build a brand, you have to figure out how to manage it all, right? But yes. you also have to prioritize. Right. And if that means, okay, on you know Saturdays, I'm going to lose a little bit of sleep because I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do three hours of personal development. That's what you need to do, you know? Yeah. And you don't learn, you don't. You don't... You're like, no, I need to take a break and I'm burnt out and I need to just rest, rest. But know that that's where you are, like, in the journey. You can't really compare, you know, everybody else's winning season to where you are. Right. And it's hard. It's hard not to compare yourself, you know. And, and sometimes when you're, like, in the driver's seat, it's a complete different view than when you're in the passenger seat. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, and sometimes you can get caught up in the whole, like, shiny, shiny object syndrome. Like, oh my God, this mm -hmm. person has this or this person's doing that. Like, oh my God. And unfortunately, social media does that because yeah, obviously you 
you see and you post whatever good is going on around you. You don't post your actual struggles. Yeah, there. you don't post yourself freaking crying. Right. That's like when you, like, when you, you know lose what? seven lefties. I always try to find that on there too. You know, me personally, um, I realized like the first time that I ever let anybody into my personal life on my business page was when my mom, you know, got had the accident that she had where she almost died. And the reason was because my mom has been a huge, you know, part of my own like growing my business. Right. And so everybody, if you, if you know me and in my business side of my life, in my life period, to be honest, but in the business side of my life, you probably know my mom. And so when that happens and I let everybody in, you know, I was like, damn, that's not, it's not something that I usually do this. I don't, I don't ever mix like my personal life with my business. Mm-hmm. But on my personal page, right? On my personal life, everybody knows that's my business. That's what I got going on. It mm-hmm. was like this clear, like just like a line. And when you realize that it's not, like you're just one person. Like you're one person with one, you know, like face. Like there's no need to divide yourself into this, like, I am this person for my business and I am this person personally. Like, yeah, so it doesn't have to be that divide there either. Yeah, right. you gotta be yourself. No, of course. And that's what's going to attract the right client to you, too. It's like the, the clients that, you know, can relate to you, can see you eye to eye. And like, those are the best ones to work with. Mm-hmm. Too. All, all the clients that I've had, I always say it and I say knock on wood because I've never had a client that I had an issue with. I've never had a client that was like, I don't like any of this. I want my money back. I don't I've never had those problems. And I think that that is a like. It may be like minuscule to some people, but to me, it's a big thing because it is very hard to satisfy people. And then oh, yeah. when, you know, when I do the same thing in events in my nine to five, we have a lot of clients who are unhappy, you know, uh, with a, with a service that is even higher than what I offer in my small business. Right. And so it means a lot to me that I have not had that situation yet. A client that is, is upset with me. And I think it's about that. It's it's in the relationship and that relationship Mm -hmm. comes from authenticity, right? Like being yourself. Like once one client meets you, they're going to tell the next person about you and you just, it works that way. Like, it's like we were talking about earlier, you know, one, one person telling the next person is, is going to be the pool that you're in now, right? That's like, yeah. that becomes the demographic. And so with me, thankfully, I've been able to have clients that I have like a relationship with, you know? And it's, it's, it's weird because they say like, you, you most of your clients are not people that you really know. They're not people, they're not oh, your yeah. friends, they're not your family, you know? They're people that just trust you. Like people mm-hmm. that trust that you're going to, give them what they want and what they envision and what they're paying for. And to me, that means a lot, like, especially right now at what, this is not where I was charging 200, right? These are 4,000, 5,000 and better parties. Mm -hmm. Like giving someone that amount of money to work with you, you trust that person. And that's enough for you as a, as a vendor, as a small business owner to say, you know what, like these relationships are important. Like it is important for me to be myself and it is important for me to upkeep these relationships because these people trust me enough to make sure that I got money in my pocket, that they, they feeding my kid. Like, yeah, that's exactly it. Now that you mentioned, now that you mentioned that, I wanted to ask you like, what was your like most expensive party or event that you threw? Um, so I, my biggest account, right. It's not one party. My biggest account is a high school that I work with. It's a high school in Harlem. I'm not going to say the high school, but, um, it's a high school in Harlem that I work with that books me for the whole year. So any Mm -hmm. event that they have, um, in the school, I already am budgeted to work those events. And so that school, the biggest party we did was like one of their proms and it was like, $12,000. $12,000. Wow. So that was my biggest budget, right? If I have to like do numbers now and tell you what I profited, God knows, because it was so long ago that it was during times where you weren't really making money. You were making mm-hmm. money to put that into the next thing, put it into my storage, put it into getting an LLC, putting it into getting new. Yeah. So I wasn't looking at like, how much did I make from this? I made enough to literally survive to for that month time. and then also invest in myself. Um, but that was my biggest budget. And then after that was like a wedding that was a couple of years ago. Um, that was a pretty big budget too. Okay. 
Don't worry. Eventually, you'll be doing some parties down in Miami. And- oh, Miami. I, 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 I have my first checks, and I have checks that people have written me, and I'm like, I can't wait till I see one of these, and it's like 100K. Like, <laughs> That'd be awesome. So when when you were starting your, your business, did you tell anybody about it before you started it? And like, did you have like any naysayers, like negative-ass people? Always, right? There's always that. Um, because I know our parents are always trying to keep us safe, like, oh, be a doctor or go be a lawyer or go do this or go, go do, do that. Go be an accountant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Looking over here like a blob. Was your was your was was your mom that way too? So you know, my mom has never been um like very vocal about her any critique towards me, right? She's always been very supportive or very silent. So. Um, I've never had to deal with anything, even in my personal life with my mom, like being a naysayer. And I think that that is something that is like a privilege. Right. And is like something I'm super grateful for that. She's always been the person to make me feel like if that's what you want to do, not like you could do this, go for it. Right. <laughs> not like that's super encouraging. Take the risk. But she's always like, if that's what you want to do, you're going to be, out, you're going to be okay. okay. That's okay. Right. Like, you know, like it, it's enough um, encouragement and motivation where it, f- it feels like support. And then when we were in the thick of things, when I first started, it was beyond support, right? Like it was just me and her in the field. Like we were putting on chair covers and tying, <laughs> you know, working long hours. They were in the beginning, like I said, I was only charging a couple of hundred dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So there were days where we would literally work from like 6 a.m. to like 2 a.m. And it was because we were in Brooklyn, then we were in the Bronx, then we went back to Brooklyn to pick up, but then we came back to the Bronx to pick up, and then we prepared for the next day, and then, like, there's pickups and there's deliveries, and we were just doing all of that, just me and her. And so, you know, I would never say that my parent, um, the one parent that I do have was a naysayer, um, but definitely, you know, they make you feel like, is that what you want to do? Like, you could be comfortable forever getting this check, like... And it's because that's what they know, you know? And so, like, I think it's up to us to also show them, like, yeah, yeah. Look, have to do this. Like, even if you didn't think it was possible, even if it was something that was against the norm, look, I could do this. Like, I'm good at it, and look at me doing it, right? And so, there, you know, I didn't have that from her, but from closer people to you, right, in your circle, or in the, in the, in the form of not fully supporting, um, or people just telling you like you have a kid now, like be careful, you know th- those like type of things. Throwing doubts in your head, like, yeah, like yeah. Well, you, there's always gonna be there's hard. always gonna be people there's always gonna be people that are gonna like oh yeah tell you to be careful or just because they don't believe it in themselves they're like oh don't do that I don't believe it for you. I mean my own grandpa, like oh. I've, I've been <laughs> I've been a realtor for like what almost. Grandpa, grandpa's watching you. I'm uh, probably watching. I don't care. I'm, here, I'm telling you how it is to keep it at 100. Um, he still to this day asked me, like, why don't you quit? Why don't you leave and go we'll get a job? Yeah, he's like, why are you a job? I'm like, I've been selling houses for almost he's three like, years now. Like, he's like, get a real job. I'm mm-hmm. like, that's the other thing, too, what they consider actual work, right? A real job, like, yeah. You know how much work this shit actually take? Yeah, you know? a lot. Huh. And it, and it, and I think that that is also what like you know um, binds my mom to the encouragement that she gives me. Like I said, she's been out here in the field with me. Like she's been setting up. She's been working long hours. She knows that this is work. Like she right. knows that this is not my little business. She knows this is not oh something that I like to do. Like it's something that I'm literally busting my ass for. Right. Like this is blood, sweat, tears all your free time, like trying to build a brand really takes you giving all of the extra time you have. And when you have a nine to five, and when you have a kid, you don't have too much of it. So you really got to like milk that shit. Mm -hmm. Besides that, you know, back then when I first started, started my relationship with Kyla, right. Who is my best friend right now. And my, you know, my preferred vendor for, for uh, cakes and and part of my package, right. Half Mm -hmm. of my package is what she, she adds to it. And for the first time, like, ever in my life in that year, that was, like, 2014, did I have, like, such a vocal friend that was encouraging you to do something that wasn't the regular thing to do. 
Mm. I think that for us growing up in a like a small girl group, a circle of friends that we all did the same things, we all thought the same way. Um, less encouragement is normal because mm -hmm. we all like we're all doing the same thing. We're all we're all doing this because that's the thing to do. Yeah. And so, like my first friend that was like, quit your job. Like, quit. Like, why are you? <laughs> and I was like blown away. I was like, nah, this girl's crazy. Like, what? <laughs> And she yeah, like, I never, I never had anyone tell me that. Me well, either. She yeah. was like, I say it all the time. That's my sister. She's in my life right now for uh, like, forever, right? And it's for that reason. And the reason is because in my life, no one, like, not family, not no one, has ever made me feel that comfortable with betting on myself. And she basically encouraged me to a point where she, like, let me see myself. Like, she was like, you're mad good at this. Like, you're good at what you do. Like, you have a plan. Like, do it. And she she does that on a daily basis, right? And so now I could say that with growth, like, now I could look to you. I could look to Victor. I could look to multiple people now. And it's like, damn, we've, we've done grown. But back then, you know, like 2013, 2014, I was very isolated dealing with, you know, just having a child. That was a difficult situation. And having this brand new friend come into my life and just encourage me was like, the blessing that you didn't know that you needed, you know, like yeah. it was like that I needed at that moment because yeah. I would have never bet on myself. I would have no, never. Sometimes, and sometimes it takes somebody else to 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 see it something in you that you don't see for yourself. Absolutely, I'm telling you, I would have never quit my job. I would have never quit. There was no way that, or if I did, I probably would have just still been struggling. Like I probably would have been like. I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. And it was literally just encouragement that pushed me in the right direction. Like someone just telling you, yo, you good at this. Like so good that you could charge people. And yeah, back then we were charging a couple of hundred dollars, but that really grew into now people know not to even contact us with a couple thousand, right? Like if you don't got a couple thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, you're, 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 vo you're vocal about that on your Instagram. I'm absolutely vocal because we've grown so much <laughs> that we can, right? Like I know what I can offer you. I know what the value of my work is and I know what you're looking for and I know what it costs. It's yeah. not only about what I'm paying myself. It's about what you want and what it costs. And I, and I started from the bottom. Like I started from doing everything myself from pouring glitter on shit, from doing everything myself. <laughs> I was making them $200. Now you, don't, now you don't pour glitter on shit? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because you know what? I don't know what? why I pictured a glitter, like a glitter filled poop. Like Really? Yeah. Wow, babe. So yeah, just having her grab the poop and like throw it in the... In the... <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? <laughs> It's just beer. It's just regular beer. I'm just saying, it's like I, I don't put I don't put glitter on shit. So it's like I'm over here thinking. I, like, we, I get that. I get that often. And that's when you get a client that tells you, um, I have everything, but can you set it up for me? I absolutely cannot. I cannot. I don't care what you got. I don't care what you bought on Amazon. I don't care what shit you got that you want me to put glitter on. That's not what I do. Because back in the day, that's what I was doing. Like years ago, right? Years ago, I was like, all right, what else you got? Mm, I could use this. Let's figure it out, right? But now I know, oh, I don't need to do that because now I know how to design my own shit. Now I know where to go. Now I know where yeah. to purchase things. Like you just, it was, you know, it was a learning process. And where I'm at now is not where I was, right? And so that, that like, it requires a different level of clientele, a different, you know, Someone you know, have a different level of thinking. Absolutely. It takes more work. It just takes more work, period. Because now I have to think of the actual logistics, right? Like I have to think of how many vendors am I using? How am I using my budget? What what does my, my day look like on the day that we're executing the event? How many deliveries do I have and when do I have to start them? I literally have to work like a lot to be able to make your event become what it is. Some people think it's all cute. Like, you know, oh, I've that's never had... Have you ever had somebody that asks you for something like super over the top that you're like, you had to like reel them in? Like, absolutely all the time. That's like an all the time thing though, because everybody mm -hmm. wants the top, but then they still have their budget where they're at. Mm -hmm. So we got to meet there. You know? <laughs> 
So we all, I always got to bring them down. Like, I always okay. got to like, oh, that's nice, but let's get here, right? That's like, that's like real estate. Like, I want this and I want that and I want that. But then they pre approved. I'm, I'm that customer client. <laughs> so I want, a, I want a house in this zip code with the pool and mm -hmm. minimum of four bedrooms. And mm -hmm. oh, but yeah, you were only approved for this amount. Yeah. So we need to look at houses in this area yeah. with this. It's a tough, <laughs> it's no a tough conversation, but it, it needs to be had. Yeah, no. I mean, and then also, but you know what's a good way to like probably you know curve them in that conversation? Like, well, you told me that one time. You know, like this don't have to be your forever home. It can be like an investment. Like it can be. Oh yeah. You know, like, People need to see the 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 benefit of anything, right? Oh, yeah, so that's how I bring some clients down too. Like your event's still gonna be fire. Like you got, you know, we can still work with this, but this top tier shit. If you can't pay for that, then we gotta think about what can you pay for. Like yeah. let's look at what you got and make it top tier with what you have. You like know? we can't if ask for blue label. Good. Like we can't ask for blue label if all we have is red label money. We it's can't like, ask for Kiko when we drink in Mionetto. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it's two different type of things. So what, what does the future look like for Destiny and, and, and her business? And life and life. To, well, no, you see, I was going to start with I hope to, but I will. I will expand into, I want to expand into a household name, right? And I want to also um, meet that, like, uh, collaboration where the like where design and the core and events meets real estate right because i feel like besides just being a designer besides just having a knack for decor i am great at you know event planning period at putting together an event from the bottom up and that's necessary in your world right like having real estate events is a big thing like you know growing your client base growing relationships with other, you know, people in your fields, in your business, you have to have an event planner for that. I want to yeah. be everybody's event planner. Like I want, yeah. I want to be the person that people come to when they have to host an event, like period, no matter what that event is. I can't, I can't, I mean, yeah, I can't wait for, uh, we, we need to hire you for when we do our first like big brokers open, when we get that luxury listing. The two yeah, like a big listing. Yeah. yeah. The small things right like i want like people to be able to reach out to me to say oh i want to collaborate with you to host like this small brunch like this you know because that's what holds a lot of weight too all these collaborations like having the conversations is not only about that that big number and it's not only about like i want to be this household name and i want to be it tomorrow no we gotta have we gotta go in the rooms that like you know i've been keeping myself out of you know, I have to have the conversations that I've been too afraid to have that that gets you in the door for the little things for let's do a couple of mimosas with all the girls that, you know, made this much this month. And that is how you start and you continue to branch out. I feel like we should do a dinner yeah. since you have so many people on your Instagram telling you like, oh, my God, you need to cook for me. You need to cook for me or I want to I want to yeah. try your food. So when we you should say throw we an need event. to have a dinner, you mean we need to cook the dinner? Yeah, we'll, we'll cook the dinner. <laughs> we'll throw the event Thanks and, right we'll away. Eat and party with you, too. Like okay. whatever it is in the party, like we make it a thing. That sounds good. We okay. make it we make it a, we make it a, an event. We charge per ticket. By the time I day. get back out there, we're going to have to make it an event. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like it's been so long that when I get back out there, I'm going to come with everything. Like, all the balloons behind me. Let's go. <laughs> now that you say come everything, well, come with everything, because you were mentioning earlier, and I, I don't know if it was during when we were live or before the live, but you were saying that you, you've you been sacrificing to come to Florida because you want to make it a goal to come to Florida. So, like, what 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 is your goal? What is your vision? What do you want to do in Florida? So for me, the first thing, no matter what, like no matter what I want for myself, as much as you know, you gotta fill your own cup to be um everything for everybody else. Mm -hmm. My daughter comes first, right? And that's just like you just you just learn that when you become a parent and it's just in me, right? To put her first. And so because her dad has relocated to Florida. Um, already, like, I think he's almost going to make his 10 year mark out there. Oh, right. Wow. Time flies. Yeah. Bro. I realized it too. And I was like, wow, it's been a long time. So, you know, that really be even, and Giselle was there before him, but 
that really is what does it for me. Like that's where he's settled. And that's where, um, you know, our pieces too. Like when Charlotte and I go to Miami or we go to Orlando, it's a different kind of piece that you don't have in New York, no matter where you go in New York, you know, mm-hmm. you could go upstate, you could go here, you could go there. Um, and it's not the same feeling. Right. And even right now, like where I live, it's, it's a nice enough area where Charlotte could be outside by herself. She could go to the basketball court. She could go to the playground and I know she's safe, but things are crazy in New York, you know, and we've already done our time here. She's going to be, you know, 10 years old soon. And I feel like she has enough New York in her where it's time <laughs> to like move on to the next place. And I want it to be a place where she can have that relationship with her dad you know, where she could be closer, where things could be a little bit easier. Um, and also because, you know, moving as a single mom is scary as shit, right? And so you want to go someplace where you know you got some kind of support. Yeah, so sure. the first place that I can always think of will first always be Florida because that's where he is. That's where his mom is. That's where you guys are. Like that that amount of support is a, is a good amount of support to start with leaving New York because I've never left New York to begin with. So they, and and there's so many people, right? Like now my cousins, they live out there. So they were the four, okay. first to, you know, leave New York and go to Florida. But um, there's- so They've been many- here for a while now, right? Like three or four years, right? Two years now? Oh, two years. Because they moved right before the pandemic. Um, okay. But yeah, so, you know, that, that, even that, right? Like even, I don't have like such a close relationship with my family, but just knowing that you know enough people in a different place it's a good, like, for me at least, like, and I guess it comes from that, like, place of fear, too, like, and comfort, where you could start, you could start that relocation journey with a place that is, like, safe for you and your kid, and so, you know, that's, that's what I hope is next. Charlotte finishes school um, in June, and this school only goes to fourth grade, so any school she starts over here is going to be midway through, um, and any school she starts over there after the year is going to be, you know, the beginning of. So we hope within, you know, like at least within the next year, once she's actually entering middle school to, you know, say bye to New York. Even yeah. If I mean, now that you talk about it, I'm thinking about when I moved in 2009 and I'm like, I didn't know anybody. I'm like, bye, mom. Bye, my, my sister, my brother. And they were gone. I'm leaving into a new state where I don't know anybody like. People do it. Look at my, you know, my sorority sister Karina did it and she went to fucking Wisconsin. Oh, like, yeah. She's been like, to different states and she's like, yeah, people do it. And she's had people that do different states. I think it's a, it's a Sagittarius thing. It's like we like to explore and like whatever. Oh, that's like, true. You guys things. both are Sagittarius, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm not, I don't think so because if I were to ask you, would you move to any other state right now? You'll be like, because of Gianna, that's different. If I didn't have Gianna, that, that would be different. Because when Gianna goes to but school. But you moved over here with Gianna. Yeah, but she was little. Now she has friends, a life. She could get friends somewhere else. <laughs> that's what. She's that's watching. Cool. She's watching. That's fine. You can get friends somewhere else. <laughs> but that's that was always my concern with Charlotte, too, right? Like, I didn't want it to be, like, such a struggle for her. But then you also got to think of that, like... It's not like it's what you're introducing your kid to, you know, like it's like not you don't have to present it as a struggle. It's just a difference. Like it's a difference. Like there's going to be so many moments of change within our children's lives that there ain't nothing wrong with getting them used to it in the beginning. And like I said, I've given her enough like stability Mm -hmm. for her first four to 10 years. Where is that even now if I leave and if we're in Florida one year and then the next year we're somewhere else, then it is what it is. Right. Because at least she has felt stability and right. also life is ever changing. So ain't nothing wrong with just exploring new places. So for, those people, the, for those people that are living up North or in, in another state, cold. like, and want to relocate to Florida, what's your favorite, like, I'm going to tell you, what's your top three things about Florida that you love? Um, Damn, I mean the weather, obviously, first of all, but just lately it's been so weird that it's hard to say weather for anybody these days. It's always better than New York, though. So let's stay, let's start with that. I'm over the weather. The weather is I'm good. over the snow. So being a northerner, being from New York, like you gotta feel over this. Like you gotta love the snow on a different level to actually not be over it. Because I'm 35 years old and I've had it with snow. So that's it, right? Like I'm good on the snow. Um, and then the other thing would be like, I like if you do not know me, 
most people that know me know I love Disney. I love Disney anything. So yes. Orlando specifically. She's obsessed. Like, She's obsessed. I am Disney obsessed. And I think that I would like it would be very weird for me to not want at one time in my life be like the Disney person that I should be. <laughs> like, be what does that even mean? The Disney person. You want to live like, there? Passes you want to live at Disney? I want. Yeah. They have houses. <laughs> you see, that's the life that I want. I want, I want a vacation and a vacation home in Disney. Like I want to feel that life for a bit. Um, And then come on, like Miami is like New York, but with, with, with a lot of sun. Yeah, so it's a good, it's a good, like all the clubs, like, you know, I'm, I'm a New Yorker at the end of the day. And like, when you go places, you want to feel like you're at home. So wherever I go, like, I'm always like, damn, I could live here. And if I can't live there, then I'm good on it, you know? But <laughs> like, there's certain places where you get there and you're like, yeah, I could live here. Like this, this is where yeah. I can see myself. There you heard, you heard it for yourself. Relocate to Florida, the <laughs> sunshine state. Nobody, nobody's it's asking so you to high. stay in the cold. Nobody's asking you to stay in the freezing like temperatures or the freezing wind. Grab your bags, grab a plan, and come for down. What you're, for what you're paying in rent in New York, you could you could have a, a, a mini mansion here. A mini mansion for real. <laughs> And a lot of opportunity, right? Like a lot of investment. A lot of opportunity. New York right now is what they're offering, um, is what Miami and and other places been had, which is all the these buildings with amenities now, like uptown, and in in places that they weren't at before. Um, and that they they look real nice, but yeah. the rent is wild, right? Like how much that, around four thousand dollars for a beautiful what? Yeah, for a new, like a luxury building with amenities. You got a rooftop. In the number. Bronx? Um, the one that I was looking at is in Astoria. I don't know what that so is. So in Queens. Yeah, that's in Queens. Yeah, but and and I, I I would not look into the ones in the Bronx because like I'm not paying that. <laughs> right, that's crazy. And I'm not paying that to stay in the Bronx. So when you were a New Yorker, you look outside of the Bronx to act like you're going somewhere else. So I'm like, I'll look at Astoria. I'll look at <laughs> because at least I'll look at Dykeman. Go. I'll look at Dykeman. Not even. No, there's no there's no luxury buildings there yet. Like that, they. Uh, they have to yet. I mean, yeah, for four thousand dollars, shoot, you can get a nice ass condo oh, here in downtown. No, you you can for four thousand dollars. You can get a nice ass like. Eight bedroom home. Yeah, condo. No, <laughs> penthouse. Penthouse. No, but I mean, you'll have it'll be four thousand plus. You could probably pay your 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 electric bill, your water bill, all your bills. The guy that comes that does that long without you asking him. Your <laughs> bill, huh? <laughs> You can have everything you need in that. Oh, what other did I want? We got Wee comments. Manuel. Hello. Que lo que si lo va, lo vas a hacer, hazlo con... Manuel, estábamos hablando de la cultura. De la cultura. Que Manuel, era... I was thinking about you the other day because it was Mother's Day, baby. You know I'm a mother. <laughs> I'm a mother. Oh, my God. Oh, I, was, I was looking at the videos from Vegas. And that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah I thought we were about in Vegas it. A year ago, actually. Vegas doesn't seem like it was a year ago. Shit. That's crazy. We need, to, we need to do another Vegas trip. Nah, all the, like like tomorrow. Yeah. Like Vegas, I'm waiting time. for I'm waiting for you to give me the green light and when when uh, you get to ready to start moving around again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oye, 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 ni que de la de Puerto Rico no es. Oye. <laughs> you either anymore. You either. Okay, you Chicago, ya. De la pelea ya, de la pelea. Que sea, que sea paz y amor. Listen, lo que when you're from New York, for everybody else watching, when you're from New York, you're not just from New York. Like, New York is your nationality. But you are from where you're from. Right? Yeah. Like, you're from New York, but you're Puerto Rican. You're from New York, but you're Dominican. You're, you're Rican. York, but you're Mexican. You, you, cannot, you cannot tell me <laughs> that I'm not Puerto Rican. <laughs> 
There's exactly. no way. There's yeah. no way that neither one of y'all, just because y'all was born over there, gonna tell me that I'm not Puerto Rican. You not from where we from? Where you gotta be something. You got. You have to be. Like, there's no option. You are. You pick something because you gotta be it. <laughs> and I happen to be Puerto Rican. Like, <laughs> he, he, he. I know what he means, though. I understand what he means. I understand his point too. I understand it. I get it. It's, it's definitely hard being like a disapora. Like it's definitely hard, but it's just it's sometimes at least for us. That we were raised like I, I mean i was born in chicago but i was raised there like all my life it's like you see all these people call themselves puerto rican mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's like like Are you? you don't have you ever lived in the island no yeah. like have you ever do you speak spanish no but my cousin lived there or my my dad lived there for a couple of years and he's puerto rican too so that makes me puerto rican it's like we get, the same, really... we get the same thing though being just being from new york you have people from oh, New York. You have people from New York all the people time love. that um move right when they're kids <laughs> to wherever, right? Let's say Chicago, somewhere else, and they love to say, "I'm from New York." Like, are you though? Like, <laughs> when was the last? It's like it's like think about it. Gianna right now saying she's from New York. No, you not. Baby. Listen, she's so more New York than me though. Like, yeah. wow, <laughs> wow, wow. No, I see her talking to her friends, and I'm like. Big bong. <laughs> like you see, her friends are mad Florida, and she's mad mm -hmm. New York. But she she came here when she was one, which is but that. But that's a good distinction, you know. Like that's a good distinction to have. Like being from New York is a top tier quality. Like <laughs> it's, like, it's like she has this swag in school that people notice. And hey. It's like weird to describe, hey. but it's like a New York thing. Heard you, sis. Heard you. Sis. <laughs> Her like tell, tell Destiny how she came the other day telling you that her name isn't pronounced how you like you said oh, it's pronounced. Oh, oh, it's the way but it's not Diana. It's what was it? Diana? Some shit no, like this. So, so fucking weird. <laughs> Some freaking weird shit. And oh, because I said her name was Gia G Gianna. Gianna. And she was like, no, it's Gianna. Like Gianna. It's like no, you don't tell me what the hell is pronounced. <laughs> like I, I, I named or you. Or Gigi, she she calls herself Gigi. As you don't, you don't have culture. Either. Oh, Manuel, go to sleep. If you Manuel. don't speak Spanish, you don't have our culture either. And I speak, oh, and I speak that Spanish. Que tú quieres que te diga en español, dime. This <laughs> way. Ella habla español. Ella va español y ya, that, that's it. That's right. That's it. She's like, I know español. I want to know what happened to my spicy margaritas that never got deli de delivered. Where'd you order it from? Um, Uber Eats. Damn. Se la bebió, se la bebieron Uber Eats. Probably. They y nosotros drank. sin nada. They drank the whole jalapeno. All right, that's it, because hello. <laughs> Uh, but do you have any questions for us? I think this is my new my new favorite thing is having people ask us questions. Oh. You have any yeah, questions I, for you us? Know, I was thinking about that because I asked you guys. I was like, damn, what am I going to be talking about? Um, so I was thinking about you know what am I going to be talking about? And um, <laughs> I think one of the questions that I have for you guys is who are who are people that you guys look up to like that you each either individually or as a team look up to right now currently that keep you going right that motivate you enough to say like yeah i want to i want to reach this level right because i have tons of people that i follow right that that i look up to on a daily basis that is like yeah i want to get to that level like who are you guys right now currently following and like really into that you want to you know meet where they are well, one of my biggest like like ah, idols is like ryan serhan's oh that's mine ryan yeah. serhan is like the it guy like he has a routine every day he has He's created this big, massive brokerage. Like he's just fucking. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a social media. He's like a a pre, He's a brand. He's a brand, basically. He's his own brand. Yeah. 
Um, and there's there's so many like women like team leaders right now here as realtors that I look up to. You want to say no names? No, I mean there's too many. I, oh. I have a lot. Because mine, mine, I was gonna say is like Ryan Serhant, just because like the way that he's structured, the way that he is, he puts different hats throughout the day, like the business guy, he has to be a father, he has to be a husband, he has to be a friend, you know, all these different hats that he has to maneuver. And I think like his social media presence is something that I guess we all strive to have, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, wow, your content's great, sir. Like, I wish <laughs> I wish I could make that content, but I don't have the money to, like, you know, have a, a camera guy follow me or follow have somebody or yeah. somebody to actually From do the four content. In the morning, for me. too. It's like, you know, I don't have all those perks, but. Or like really good editors because don't underestimate recording on your iPhone and then to giving that to really good editors because editors are like underrated. Like oh, a yeah. lot of content comes from a phone you know and then you you pass that along to a video editor and they're going to like make it fire make it yeah. Oh, yeah. content so i think that guy like the fact that he grew his own team and then now he has his own brokerage like he's somebody that we definitely i mean at least i definitely looked up to yeah yeah definitely. i love that he has like such a diverse firm too like it's super fire that he has like so many women so many women from different places and like the events that he hosts are super fly, you know. What oh I mean? my god! Every time I get the emails about him inviting me to a, like I'm an event, and I'm and I can't go because it's mad far, I get upset. Yeah, you. But that should be like the goals besides just like going to some place for fun, traveling someplace for like personal development, right? Because those are the parties you guys want to be at. Like you oh, want to yeah. be at one of these dinners in New York, and just you know rub elbows with other realtors that are like selling these multi-million dollar units like that's true because they do get a lot of people that are had your favorite chef the other day um what's the chef you like just now what's his name um mm. i like a lot of chefs huh he's from new york he's from new york and it's chef. dominican i don't know if he's dominican chef kelvin Chef Kelvin, Chef Kelvin. So Ryan Serhant did his, um, the event that Ryan came to the other day, like that conference, Yeah. Um, Chef Kelvin did an, a dinner for him. Oh. And I was like, that's so cool. Yeah, that's like I thought awesome. that was fire. I think, I think it's not the first time he does an event for Ryan Serhant. I think he posted something, like Chef Kelvin posted something the other day about like cooking for for a party that he had or for a brokerage event, something oh, like that. I don't remember. See, but that's that was fine. Those are the worlds that I'm telling you I want to mix in for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I definitely, you know, I definitely agree. Like, we're all in a different stage of our lives right now. And we're all at the stage that we have to be in order for us to continue to go where we're going to go. Um, but I guess in, in, in that note, we'll make sure to kind of, you know, kind of close it out for tonight. Yeah, want to thank that. Thank Cindy. you for com for coming to our show. Yeah, and doing great. Thank you for for yes. for acting yes, the part nervous. and doing great things. <laughs> like, I hope we made you feel comfortable and not nervous. Yeah. yeah, now now I can recommend the next person. Now I can say this was a good. It was a good um experience. Yeah. Oh, good see, good, good. Do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> let, let your friends know. Let them know to follow us and yeah. And we, to our like, too. That's that's my pool of inspiration. My pool of inspiration is all the people around me. So you guys can't interview yourselves since this is your show. But so many of us are doing so many dope things right now. You know that the next person needs to be somebody that's doing the same amount of fly shit that it's like it may be a different like industry but there's always a way that you can mix worlds there's yes, always a way for sure. you can connect the dots you know and when once you see that once you see that everything that you've been doing and everything you've been learning is going to get you in a room and once you're in that room you can connect all those dots like beautiful shit happens i'm watching it Ooh. every day i'm watching my friends do amazing things and i'm like you know the shit that we do is pretty dope right like like we're really dreaming out loud right now like we're really saying i want to do this and then just doing it right yeah that shit is a big deal like you lesson, know yeah, for sure um nothing and it was it was always a pleasure to like 
talk to you. It's always fun to hang yes, around. I'll be there soon. I'll be there soon. Yes. I was going to say, we're going to be there, but no, we're not going to be there anytime soon. We don't know when we're going to be out there. But hopefully sometime <laughs> soon before the cold comes, before the cold hits. But, you know, our doors are always open for you and Charlotte. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever you guys want to come visit the, the, the mouse and, and hang out for a little bit, yeah, we'll be there uh, so we're always <laughs> available. So, again, thank you so much for keeping it 100 with us. Uh, hopefully we can... You know, come up with something soon, do an event or do something. Yes, yes, I'll be out there soon. For those people that are watching, I know y'all want me where that mic is right now. <laughs> I know I'm back and I'm right better. Here. The third wheel is back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> For those people that are watching and yet to subscribe to us, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Keeping it 100 with us, and Victor. We're always here every Thursday at 7 p.m. So until next time. Peace. Peace. Bye, guys.